Right, you guys got another video on do this to lower your CPU temperature. Quite a few people were commenting on yesterday's video and saying, don't do this, don't do that. You should do this, you should do that. So I thought I'd make a video showing you different variations of lowering your temperature and different ways of doing it as well. And hopefully people can choose which way suits them. So you can see here is the power plan right here where it says maximum processor state, and we had this set to 99%. I'm gonna put this back to 100%, and we'll run a CPU benchmarker. That was the other thing that people were pointing out that the benchmark I was running was not stressing the CPU. But what they failed to recognize was the CPU Z does actually stress test the CPU. And this is what it's doing right here. It's maxing out the CPU by 100%. And you can see it goes into the red and gets up to around about 90 odd Celsius. And this is pretty normal for AMD processors. The maximum temperature for this particular CPU, which is the 7700X, is 95 Celsius. I'm running this on an all-in-one water-cooled system, and you can see it still reaches 90.5. So let's take a look at how we can lower this down. Now, the first thing that people were talking about is the Ryzen Master, which is a piece of software that you can download and install if you have an AMD processor, and you can configure it from here and make changes to try to cool the CPU down and overclock, undervolt, all this sort of stuff. You can change the control mode to eco, default is on default now, auto overclock and manual. You've also got some other settings on here like all cores or per core, and you can also change expo right here for your memory and all that sort of stuff. So depending on what you want to do, you can do it inside here. And there's also an advanced view here. If you want to see a full video on this, let me know in the comments section down below. I'll be happy to make a video on this. I would leave this software well alone if you're not familiar with it because it is for advanced users and you can cause yourself a lot of problems if you're delving into this area right here. So you can see we've got the core section here and we've also got the voltage control you can control the voltage from here as well and undervolt the cpu if you wanted to do that i've made videos on undervolting i've made videos on overclocking and i've made videos just about on every topic you can think of people need to realize that i make videos on all topics and it's just a how to do something it's not the best method or anything like that it's just how to do something and i'm showing you in that video so yes this video wasn't probably the best method for doing things it was just one method of a way of doing something and i showed it in that video we got precision boost overdrive here as well and you can select all the cores here is the cores right here and you can control these cores one by one if you wanted to you can change different uh, overclocks for each core or you can do each uh, core separately by just dragging this slider let me just show you here and we'll drag this slider once we go on to manual here you can see i can adjust each core separately or i can just push this little button right here and it allows me to drag all the cores up and use this method as well so i'm not going to go too deep into this because i wanted to just show you other ways of doing it as well inside the bios but we're going to discard those changes but basically, if you wanted to change uh, the voltage here, once you've got this window up here, you can see voltage control right here. And this is where you can change the voltage right here as well for that particular CPU. So if you wanted to undervolt it, there is also apply and test down the bottom there as well, right down the bottom of the screen. You'll be able to click that and it will do a little small test. But remember, if you're undervolting and things like that, it is going to change the stability of that system. And you will need to do much more extensive testing uh, if you wanted to uh, use these settings. So bear that in mind, if you're changing any of the settings, you will need to do extensive testing. And you can use programs like Cinebench and programs like that to test the CPU to make sure it's functioning properly and it's not crashing. If you get any instability, it will crash and it will cause problems. And this is a big problem that I see with a lot of videos where they're just showing something and every single CPU will act differently. You could purchase a free 7700X CPUs and they would all perform completely different. Some will allow less voltage than others. And this is why you have to be very careful and you have to test thoroughly. 
So we're going to be running Geekbench 6 here, and this will allow us to do just a CPU benchmark, which is another thing that people were pointing out yesterday. I was just testing for stability and making sure it was okay and getting some sort of figure. Again, the benchmark software I was using yesterday was primarily, uh, you know, GPU uh, related, but it does also tax the CPU as well at some points to 100%. But we're going to run Cinebench here just for the CPU, just to please those people in the comment section and you can see this is just stock running stock uh, no changes have been made we're running just the stock default settings and you'll be able to see the temperatures here when we're running this benchmark here and uh, basically uh, we're not in the red here and that's because uh, CPU Z will really tax the CPU to 100% and that will really put some stress on the CPU. Let me just state right now that you're probably never ever going to max out the CPU like this uh, when you're playing games and that's something that people seem to forget. So when you're using benchmark software like uh, Cinebench or CPU Z or Prime95, that is going to max out the CPU by 100% and you're probably never ever going to do that when you're playing games. So bear that in mind when you're seeing your CPU go into the red when you're taxing it like I did in previous video. Uh, it's not ever going to get like that when you're, you know, say playing a game or something like that. Another thing to remember is you might get uh, a pretty high CPU temperature when you're, say, rendering a video or something like that. It might be possible, uh, but it's very unlikely to max out the CPU in that sense. So these are the default scores for the single core and for the multi-core, 2,876 for the single core, 14,880 for the multi-core. And that is on balance power plan and its default settings. I've not touched any of the settings. It's as it would be if you uh, took the CPU out of the box and put it into the computer. So let's do another test here. I just wanted to quickly show you here on changing the advanced settings here because I wanted to give you a true reference of what it was like for the CPU. Now, another thing that we're going to do here is put this to 99. Now, people were pointing out that this will impact the performance of the CPU, and of course it will. It will also lower the CPU uh, temperatures. But a lot of people were saying that when you're gaming, it's going to impact you when gaming. Maybe if you've got a really old computer and you're doing this, I'll explain that a little bit later on. But a modern-day computer, you're probably not going to see... Uh, much of an impact on on it when you're playing games because modern day processors are pretty powerful but you will see a drop in performance here as you can see it's dropped right down and that's because we've reduced it here but also let me just reset this timer here and you'll see the temperatures are pretty low now would i use this method myself no i wouldn't i would use different methods but if you're limited and you have a laptop and you want to try to reduce it a little bit, then something like this might be ideal. But overall, you will see an impact. And you can see here, single core score is 2,391, and the multi-core score is 12,638. So a bit of an impact there on the benchmark scores. This is at 99% power setting here, on balanced. And I'll show you all these together so you can get a general idea of what method is best for you. So they are the scores right there for 99% power plan. I'll also dive into the BIOS here. And let me just show you here in the BIOS. We're going to go to advanced here. And we are going to go to AI tweaker here and tweak it. Now I've already got the, uh, the actual memory set to Expo here. And this is so we can get our profile for the speed of the memory. And what we're going to do here is go to AI tweaker. And we're going to go inside here and we're going to change something in here as well. And I wanted to show you this as well. Now, there's quite a few ways of going about it inside the BIOS. I have made videos on this previously, but I just want to quickly show you. And then we can do a quick benchmark to show you here. So we've got the precision boost overdrive here. And that's what we need to have a look at here. So going into position boost overdrive. We're going to change this setting from auto. And we'll first try the uh, enhancement version. And we'll go into this one right here. We also have AMD Eco Mode. I'll try that a little bit later on. So we'll do this one here. Now we can set the level here. So I'm going to set the level to this version here. Level 2, 80 Celsius. This will bring it down at least by 10 Celsius, which is quite a lot. So we'll reduce it down to this. 
But again, we're going to leave all of the other settings alone, but I've made videos where you can tweak these settings down here uh, as well. Uh, but I'm not going to go into that in this video. But if you want to see a separate video on that, then you can check out my playlist on how to undervolt the system as well. So let's go ahead and save these settings and we'll go back to the desktop and we'll run another test. And we're on level two enhancement 80 Celsius right here. So let's save these settings and get back to the desktop and we can run a test here as well and you'll be able to see. So I've reset the uh, system right here and what we're going to do is run the CPU Z stress test and if everything is set right we should be stuck at 80 Celsius because that's what we set it to and there we go. We are now stuck at 80 Celsius instead of going up to 90 odd Celsius. So how has that impacted the system? Well, we'll run a benchmark on here as well so you can see and you can choose whatever method suits you. But remember, like I said, this is Precision Boost Overdrive, single core, 2,922, multi-core score, 15,591. That's what you're going to get if you use that particular setting right there. Pretty impressive. It's brought it down to 80 Celsius and we're still getting decent scores. So let's go back in and change it down to AMD uh, here, not manual. I'm going to go back in and change this back to AMD Eco mode. And we'll leave that as is. And we'll change the TDP down to, say, maybe 65 watts. And reduce the TDP down to 65 watts, which will also bring the temperatures down for the CPU. And we'll see what performance hit we have by doing this, uh, you know, and we can do a quick benchmark and stress test on the system. Again, there's quite a few other ways of going about doing it, like reducing the, uh, you know, the voltage manually yourself. If you want to go down that route, I'm trying to make things simple for people. And again, these are just tutorials on how to do things. Uh, you choose which method suits you. So I'm going to save these settings and go back. And now we're going to run a CPU Z and do a, a stress test on the CPU right here. And you can see uh, straight away right here, we're running the stress test. And the uh, megahertz, you can see, has dropped down a little bit right here. And that's because we are now in eco mode. And you can see the temperatures down here are doing pretty good. They're not pushing uh, too high. They're 60 odd Celsius, which is pretty good. And, and that's maxed out at 60 odd Celsius. So if you want to reduce them down even lower, uh, and, and obviously you are going to take a little bit of an impact on performance, but because we are in eco mode and there is a score for that setting. For single core, we've got 2,920 and the multi-core is 14,570. We're on balance plan, power plan as well. And you can choose whether you want to use that setting. I think that's pretty decent, to be honest. And these are all the settings right here. So you can see, you can pause the screen, 100% CPU power, default settings, you can see there. And we also have the 99% CPU power setting. And you can see that did take quite a bit of a drop on the performance. And then we also have the precision boost overdrive. And then we also have the Eco 60 TDP setting right there. I actually think that the Eco uh, version for 60 Celsius was pretty decent score compared to say the precision boost as well you can see there's not much difference there and it reduced that CPU temperature down to 60 odd Celsius compared to 80 odd Celsius so it's quite a big drop so I think eco wins it for me but you can choose whatever way you want to do things there's other methods as well if you like this sort of content let me know in the comment section down below uh, whether you like this sort of content and I'll make more of it. But again, there's many ways to skin a cat. This is just a few of them. And uh, I'm trying to help you guys out, make content to explain things as best I can. Remember, the video yesterday was just a, a way of doing something. It wasn't the best way. Now, I just want to point out here for people just so they can understand, an i7-3770K and also a Ryzen 7700X, which is what is in this system, and we also have a 6700K and a 7700HQ processor. Just look at the performance difference in these CPUs. So if you are rocking a Ryzen 7 7700X and people that say it's going to impact the CPU, 
uh, by a few hundred digits. I mean, it's not going to hurt it compared to if you're rocking one of these older CPUs today. And there's a lot of people still using old hardware like this to play games on. So you can see the difference. So that's just silly talk. You're talking minus 80 plus percent for those other older CPUs, which is what people are using today. And they're trying to squeeze every bit of inch of FPS out of their PC to try and play games. And they wonder why they're getting input lag and stuttering and bottlenecks and all of this stuff. So if you're using old hardware, that is the reason why you're struggling with FPS, bottlenecks, lag, uh, input lag, and things like that. It's because the CPU just can't keep up. And even if you went into the power plan setting and set that to 99, which I made a video on yesterday, uh, it's not going to impact the system as much as what it would if you're rocking those older systems anyway, because you've got so much more power there compared to these older systems. So there's no need to worry about a lot of this stuff when you're running modern hardware, because you've got plenty of processing power there. A lot of people are still using really old hardware and struggle, uh, you know, with modern day tasks on these old computers. And as the saying goes, it doesn't matter how much tweaking you do on that older system. You can't polish a turd. You're not going to make it any better than what it is. You know, it's that simple. Upgrade the hardware and get a better performance. Anyway, I hope this has uh, cleared it up a little bit and made it a little bit more easier for people to understand uh, and some of the settings that you can change to try and reduce temperatures. You can choose whatever method you like and whatever method works for you. Remember, no piece of hardware is the same. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. I'll be happy to read your comments. Big shout out to all my YouTube members who have joined my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate the support. I shall catch you in the very next video or I'll see you on the Discord server for a chat. The link is in the video description. Have a great day and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now. <laughs>